things I try to do on this show. ESPN through the years has gotten some criticism. We don't give people enough credit when they break stories. Listen, I'm, I try to go above and beyond on that. Whether those criticisms are valid or not, I've heard them. Uh, we bring on a lot of guys on other networks, a lot, and we give them credit. So as I say that, I don't want you to think I'm poo-pooing or downplaying somebody else's work. There's a lot of stories that ESPN breaks that I don't cover. You know, we, we got a lot of investigative guys breaking stories. I don't cover those either. This story is getting some play, and I, I got to tell you, I don't know what to make of it, and I'm not outraged by it. It's the Oklahoma State paid players. According to Sports Illustrated, at least eight former Oklahoma State football players say they received cash payments from people in the program, boosters around the program, starting in the Les Miles era. And they've identified another 29, 30 guys who allegedly took money. It's a Sports Illustrated story, came out Tuesday, first part of a five-part series. Some of the guys received a couple thousand, some guys received ten um, over time. One guy, a couple guys got 25,000 or more. Okay, first of all, most of the stuff is ten years old. So it's out of the NCAA's jurisdiction. They can't do anything, even if it's true. So it's dirty laundry. There's nothing you can do about it. And I said this earlier, it reminds me of what the political press does during presidential elections. Hey, Mitt Romney, hey, gave a noogie to a nerd in high school. So we've got an economy falling apart. I don't care about that. It doesn't define him. He was a high school kid. He's 19. Well, Clinton, Barack Obama had some hemp. Again, doesn't, doesn't bother me. It, it's not defining who you are. It's legal now in two states. It's medicinally legal in 20. Who cares? They weren't black tar heroin dealers. I don't care. So I don't care about your dirty laundry if I can't punish you or I'm not hiring you. It's Romney giving a noogie to a nerd in high school. It is what it is. A lot of decent people did that. Plus, I got to be honest with you. Ooh, boosters paid players. They overpaid them for menial tasks. Really? Breaking news. Car mechanics overcharge women. Uh... Okay. Now, George Dorman did the story. He's fantastic. He was on with SVP and Rosillo yesterday, and he said two things. Um, here, here's the first thing he said. We assume guys get hooked up with a little money here or there, and that their tutor does their work for them. You know, but, but with, you know, the story we wrote today, money, you know, these were guys were getting handed envelopes, you know, full of cash after games. You know, boosters are walking up to them after games and giving them $500 handshakes. This is in the locker room. And while I know that, you know, that this can't be the first place that that's occurred, you, you think, wow, that, you know, is not behind the scenes. That's not really even under the table. That's out in the open. And, and it says sort of something about not only, you know, how the, the compliance office and, and what kind of oversight exists at the school, but that they, you know, that they were really that not concerned at all about the ramifications of those actions. Well, um, they were concerned about the ramifications if it got out. If people were concerned about ramifications, they wouldn't cheat on their wives. Um, you know, everybody's concerned about stuff getting out. What he just said, I've heard about before. You know, whether you pay a guy in the locker room, outside of the locker room, or at your steakhouse that night, it's the same thing. Uh, it's wrong, and it's happening in a lot of places. Now, I'm not going to embellish this and say it happens everywhere, because I don't know that. But, I mean, let's be honest. In the South, Texas, football matters a lot. Boosters want to feel like big shots. Every time you get these boosters... Um, Cut the, get the Jimmy Johnson bite from earlier today saying he had to warn boosters. This is the reality of the Southern culture and the Texas football culture. It is, it's a big deal to have a handshake with Johnny Football and the local star, and there's going to be always that guy that wants to be a big shot in a small town. Jimmy Johnson talked about that earlier today on our show. Anytime you have, you know, over-enthusiastic boosters and alumni, mingling with your players oh boy uh there's a problem you've got to monitor that you you got to be careful there because you know they're not as concerned about the rules as what you are i think that's endemic i think it's part of the sport so again i'm not knocking george for reporting that i'm saying i think it's more common than you think and whether you're paying them in a car later that night in or out of the locker room it's paying people and it happens the second thing, and I think this is a stretch by the reporter, play this by. They would not be you know, a BCS team, BCS bowl team, absolutely not. I mean, I think once you read the full series, 
you'll, you know, I, I sort of think of them as like stanchions on which the program's rise, you know, was built. So I think absolutely not. See, now I, that's a big stretch to me. That's a big stretch to me. Because Oregon's a national program. There's no story about them paying all these players in the locker room, and there's no players in that state. Oklahoma's a state full of players. It's surrounded next door to Texas. It's, you know, it's the Plain States, the South. There's players everywhere. To say that Oklahoma State would never be great, what did Jim Harbaugh do at Stanford? They got the right coach. He turned the program around. Northwestern's good right now. Academically rigid, small school, north of Chicago. Not a great football tradition. How did they win? They got a good coach. So to say Oklahoma State would not have been as good as they are now, and they're not a top 10 program, but they're just outside of it. They're a top 15. They're good. They're Oregon about four years ago, six years ago. They're good, but they're not, you know, they're not big, big boys, but they're big boys. But I, I don't think you can make that. Hey, hand guys, started the ball rolling. You get the right coach. He recruits the right players. You can win anywhere anywhere has nothing to do with whether you're paying them or not because everybody at the big schools is taking care of these guys by the way this goes back to something i've said repeatedly doug gottlieb used to work at this network he and i are on the same page on this everybody is so consumed with college football beat players being paid they are if they were at businesses, all that housing and education would be taxable income. Our country considers gifts income, unless you work at a nonprofit like a church or a university. Our country considers education, housing, tutoring. That's taxable income. The only reason it's not is because universities are nonprofit. If they registered as a business or an LLC, you could tax all those players. These guys are getting paid education, free food, housing, living, transportation, promotion, tutoring, training, and this. So can we stop with their being extorted? Somebody please extort my kids to Stanford. By the way, Oklahoma State's biggest booster, T. Boone Pickens, he's rich, gave us thoughts on the story. There's one word I have for the Sports Illustrated reporting on Oklahoma State. Disappointing. The series is not reflective of Oklahoma State University today. Many of the sensational allegations go back a decade. There have been wholesale changes at the school in recent years in leadership and facilities. During that time, I have given more than $500 million to OSU for athletics and academics. Have I gotten my money's worth? You bet. Now, that doesn't invalidate facts written by SI. I'm not saying they're not valid. What I'm saying is there's nothing the NCAA do, can do. There's nothing in this that is egregious from what I've heard through the years. Um, I did in one report hear about coaches funneling money to players. That's bad news. The booster stuff, the, the sex during recruiting trips, I got I to gotta tell you, that is commonplace. That, that, that's not even, that doesn't even rise to mildly shocking. And a lot of it's like, it's, I can't do anything with any of this stuff. I know I should feel terrible. During these years, they were supposedly cheating 01 to 05. They were 32 and 28. Didn't do much good. 